Hi guys, it's Kelly here, and this card is for uh, this week's Casing Genius, who is Deborah Janes. I'm going to be using this image from Stamping Bella called Isabel Loves Ice Cream, and I decided to choose that because of uh, Deborah's second card where she had the little French girl sitting in the chair, and I thought that um, it would be fitting. I used a um, piece that I die cut from W plus 9 set, I think it's the Sunshine Layers, and um, I don't use red rubber stamps very often. As you can see here, I am putting it in my Misty, and the foam piece is still intact. And yeah, so then I realized that that's got to come out because it's there for clear stamping. It is not there if you have a red rubber stamp that already has that foam backing to cushion it. So I'm going to use some uh, Memento ink and Tuxedo Black because it's Copic friendly. This whole card is going to be done with Copics. Um, I don't often do my backgrounds with Copics because I'm I'm a cheap chicken and I don't want to waste the ink and there's other ways to do it. So um, I went ahead and stamped that down and then I left it on my Misty because I'm going to do a little trick later on um, with it. So um, I'm just going to lay that down and then um, I wanted a background and that same card that Deborah had done, she has um, like a grayed out background behind her of the city and I wanted to do something fairly similar. So I um, just got out my T-square ruler and I'm not an artist by any means so I'm, uh, I'm just drawing in some lines that are going to act as buildings. Like I said, it's not the focal point of my card, it's just like a little window dressing. So I go in with my pencil first and then once I'm happy with where everything is, I go back in um, with either, this is a journaling pen or a Copic multi-liner, anything that's going to be safe for Copic markers. I just drew, like I said, a couple of squares and added some windows and now we have like a little city scene behind her. You want to make sure you erase away all your pencil lines before you start your Copic coloring because if you put Copic markers over pencil, it's never coming up. You're never getting it back up. <laughs> So um, I started with my backgrounds because uh, there are some techniques that I wanted to do in the background and uh, I wanted to make sure I didn't have any other coloring on it. So I'm starting with my lightest color and I'm just filling in that whole area. I wanted to leave the um, scalloped border just white. In most of Deborah's cards she um, has like a little detail panel which I love because it's something especially if you're a clean and simple card designer um, like she and I are it's just a little something that can bring um, a little interest to your card without adding many layers or a whole lot of busyness that's going to take away from your main focal point so this is um, my first layer of all my colors I'm just laying those down I wanted the darker, um, well, darkest color to be in that center there, so it looks as if it's farther away. Anything that is darker in your design, especially something like this where it is a scene, um, is going to fall into the background, and we're going to use that to our advantage, um, especially when it comes to the buildings, to make them look like they're not flat, to give them a little bit of dimension. So once I'm done coloring my sky, I'm going to... Um, do a little trick. I've seen Kathy Rakusen use a bunch of times. I don't have a towel, but I do have a uh, cotton pad. And you just put colorless blender on it. And then you can go in and pat in, um, in my case, you know, like some clouds. Um, if you're doing just a simple background around your image, you can um, use it just to blend things out and add a little bit of texture. And it's a fun way to do that. I'm going to do the same thing on uh, my grass because it's a large area and sometimes with a large area it's very difficult to get it to blend. It requires a lot of ink and a lot of time and if you don't want to use either or you don't have the opportunity to, like I know a lot of times um, with me, I don't have a refill for every marker that I own. So here in this case I did had I did had, I did had, yeah, right. Um, I had just refilled my markers, um, so that's why you don't see, like, with this um, YG01, I'm not getting a lot of streaking, and it's because my marker was literally just refilled five minutes <laughs> before this. So, um, but not all of my markers are like that. So, again, with the background, I want the darkest parts to be in the back, so there's a little bit of... Um, the way that you perceive it is that it's not flat, is that it's um, 
an actual landscape. So I'm just going to go through and add in some shading and then she has little grass underneath her feet and underneath her chair and I'm going to add the shading to that as well. I think I used about five colors for the grass just because there was just so much of it. Um, that happens. I mean, the more, the larger your space is, the more difficult it is to blend it out. And, um, but I didn't want it to be all dark. So I'm being careful as to how far I go down. I know underneath her chair and things, I want it to be, um, continuation of that, that little bit of a darker color, just so it doesn't look odd. And then I'm going to, um, this is my darkest color, and there'll be just the littlest amounts of it in um, the shading underneath the grass and then back towards the um, buildings. Once I put that down, I am going to go back through um, from darkest to lightest. And But this time I'm not going to cover the whole piece. I'm going to draw um, just little flicks, um, real light-handed, for blades of grass. And that's just going to give it some texture. And then we're going to go back in and add even more texture with the same um, technique that I used on the sky. The reason you want to do this before you have any other coloring is because you have very little control over where that colorless splendor leaks out into. So if like I had wanted to do the sky, and the, but I had already colored my buildings, that gray from um, the buildings would have just ran right into my sky. So you want to make sure that if you're going to use this technique, it's not going to be touching any other coloring. And here I'm just going to do the same thing. I just squeezed a little bit on and then went in and just kind of tapped it around. Um, it did with the, the lightest color up front. I lost a lot of those blades of grass. So I'm going to go back in with my lightest color and just do a really quick once over um, just to add in a little bit more of that detail. And that's pretty much going to be the background. Then from here, I'll start in on the buildings. Um, I know a lot of times people will do nighttime scenes with um, cityscapes. And, uh, you know, they have all the lights on in the building. But mine wasn't a nighttime scene. So you, you wouldn't see anything like that. You wouldn't see the lights on in the building. I'm using about four different shades of gray. And you can see already, even with just the minimal shading I've done on that second building, how it starts to fall behind um, the first building. So use those things to your advantage. Here I decided I wanted to go even darker um, for these two buildings. So I'm filling them in completely with C5 and then I'm going in with C9 and adding um, a bit more shading so that that way it really does look like they're um, stacked and not just uh, parallel sitting next to each other on the street. So that part is, like I said, it's just window dressing. So I'm not taking, I'm not being careful to add in um, lots of details or anything like that. The only reason I added the windows is so it wouldn't just look like weird random blocks in my background. So um, with the, the coloring and stuff, like I said, when you add that colorless blender, it does tend to bleed. So I did go in and clean up a few areas before I started on my actual coloring of Isabel. And um, so, yeah, so Deborah, Deborah is, um, she is a very clean and simple artist, but man, her coloring is fantastic. Like if you look at, um, and by the way, I don't even think I ever tell you guys this, but all of their cards are on my blog. So anything you hear me talk about, if you're watching on YouTube, you can go view all of those things um, on my blog. So, but anyway, um, her, her coloring is just phenomenal. She has that bird card that she did that is, um, I mean, just, it's such rich color. And she got such great um, just texture with her, just with simple coloring, um, you know, on her hat. And then the, um, the little girl, the little French girl, um, those bold, bright blues. I mean, I just, I love them. The last card that she did, and she mixed it up with, with the gray and the color fantastic that's actually that rose is where i picked a lot of my colors from um for for my card i looked at what she had done and um i just really liked the uh violets um and pinks that she had in there and the um the blues you know in copics there's so many options uh for colors and i do have blues that are more traditional and then i have more of like a tiffany blue which is what i used here 
uh, for the sky and then later on I'll use it for the chair as well. When you have um, an image like this where you're trying to build a scene, there's a lot going on. So sometimes it would behoove you to keep your color palette simple and tied together. It helps your design look more um, intentional. So um, she doesn't have a lot of hair, but what she does have, um, I wanted her to be a little blonde. I thought that would be um, cute. And so I used uh, colors for um, like golds. And then, like I said, there's there's not a lot. So you don't really have to do too much. Just make sure in these smaller areas you are careful to um, to keep your highlight. Because you don't want it to be all one flat color. You want it to look, you know, like like the hair would, like your hair would in real life. I mean, that's, um, if that's the look you're going for, that's usually the look I'm going for anyway. So, um, for her dress, I had taken this ebook class on fabric folds. Um, I, not even sure if I did it justice on this one, but it is what it is. <laughs> it is what it is at the end of the day. Um, but they talk about how in there, like fabric, if you have a fabric that is tight and stretchy, like the bodice of her dress would be, that you will have little pulls. And that's what I'm putting in um, when you see me on the left-hand side of her dress. I'm putting in the little pulls. So, and then obviously her dress is very full um, and it flows up and down. So in order to accentuate that, you want to add your shading in a way that is going to... Um, so it has grooves in it. Grooves is not a good word. Um, but so they, they has lower areas and higher areas. And your higher areas are going to have your highlight. And here for her dress color, I did pick um, pinks and purples, like I said, from that rose card that she did. And I used them together. Um, most of the time, if you're trying to blend colors, you want and you want a smooth blend. You want to make sure that you're using um, colors that are similar to each other. So this I'm using RV04, and then um, I also use a V04 because they're the same saturation, which means even though they're different colors, they will blend easier. When I was doing her bodice, I think I was concentrating like too hard on making sure those little poles were in there because I was not even paying attention to the fact that I was shading her body so that she had a concave chest. I mean, I don't, I don't, <laughs> I don't know how many of you are, are walking around out there with a concave chest, but your shading should probably not be in the center of your image like this is. So eventually I will look at it and realize that that does not look right and I will fix it. <laughs> but for right now, um, yeah, it, does, it just doesn't look right. It looks all kinds of wrong. So I apologize. I'm, I'm a paper turner and sometimes I get a little off camera. Um, I just, because I can't look at the camera and do my coloring at the same time. And this coloring is sped up to about um, two, two to three. Two, I, might, I can't remember if I did two or three times the normal amount um, because it's just such a long video. It's still almost 20 minutes uh, and I've edited and sped it up and everything else and it's just because um, it's all Copic coloring and it's very time consuming. And there I finally fixed her dress so she didn't look, you know, ridiculous. Um, for her uh, little ruffles. I knew I wanted to keep those white and I was going to add that with a white gel pen. So I just didn't even do anything with them. Her chair, I decided I was going to do in blue and gold. Um, I used the same uh, gold colors that I used for her hair. So again, keeping that limited color palette. And uh, the chair, I used the same, almost the same colors that I used for the sky. It's the same color family. I just pulled in um, a little bit of a darker color. I think it was B06. Um, so that way it would be a little contrasting, but still match overall the uh, the colors that I already had going on. I've colored this image before. I never, just for practice, never put it on a card. Uh, but when I did it, I loved the idea of leaving that chair as like an open wire back. Um, the reason I didn't do it this time is just because I had so much going on in the background already. I thought it would just be a giant pain in my caboose to, to have to draw in the building in between, um, like the iron works of the chair. And I just, I didn't think it was worth it. 
I didn't think the look would be would be worth the, the pain in the butt. So I just colored it in solid and I started actually with the darkest color of the sky which was B02 and then um, went to B04 and the darkest color is in fact B06. So um, yeah in Deborah she has all these cute little um, detail panels and then in her th first first card, the card with the bird, um, she had like this just little pop of black and I loved that so I knew I was going to incorporate that into the card and um, she I also had intention her last card she has the sentiment um, heat embossed on black with like some cool little silver string behind it so that was my original intention when I had started making the card um, it didn't work out that way also when I colored this ice cream and it's so funny because in the photos it looks like it's all the same color but you can see here I'm <laughs> using different colors um, but they were so light they I wanted it to be like vanilla and strawberry ice cream um, but I use such light colors that you can almost not even tell the difference when I took my photos so they are different though I promise um, and I forgot the cone so I had to go back in and knock that out real quick I just did every other one for the ice cream just for some variation um, and then afterward um, I'll use my souffle pens um, which is a gel pen but it dries opaque and kind of bumped up like embossing so I use those to um, add some sprinkles to the little ice cream scoops um, and then here I went in with my white gel pen um, this is a just a secure jelly roll and I colored in her ruffles and I also added some dots to the butterfly in her bodice when I do the this part right here um, I normally outline my images but since I already had that on the black I thought well I'll just go ahead and ink it up with um, a more intricate um, detailing ink for for stamping and then maybe I'll just stamp right over it and see if that'll save me the outlining um, you could see my hesitation there because I realized my pad was still underneath I never moved it <laughs> Uh, I just I never use red rubber stamps I never even thought about it but it came out fine um, and I didn't have to go back through and outline every little thing it it worked perfectly so here's those souffle pens I was talking about um, there's pretty much one in every color and uh, I totally think that they're worth the buy I use them quite a bit so I added um, some little dots to the ice cream and I even added a dot to the center of the flower in her hair and then after I had done the um, stamp stamping over it with the um, W plus 9 ink it really wiped out a lot of the white details so I um, decided that I was gonna go back in and do that the sentiment um, is from a W plus 9 set and it says sweet of you now the reason that I didn't end up going with the embossing like I had intended is because this card just looked so perfectly like a postcard um, I just couldn't bring myself to do it. I wanted to leave it as one flat panel. Um, and that set, by the way, is it's a W plus 9 set. Berry, berry something. Oh, I can't remember. So I just popped that up on some foam adhesive, and that's pretty much the card. So thank you for visiting me, and if you would like to see all of Deborah's cards, you're more than welcome to come to the blog.